Corporate credit has exploded in recent years. This is the, per, the corporate credit as a percentage of US GDP. It's an all-time high. These are the maturities I talked about. See how there were none in 2018 to speak of. That's how they, they go up. Junk bonds, not so bad, but there are more junk bonds than the world thinks. I have two more slides, this, one, this and one more. This is, uh, on the right-hand panel is what we want to focus on. The dark blue area is the size of the investment-grade corporate bond market. These are the supposedly good companies that are very likely to pay you back. You'll notice that before the crisis of 08, there were around $700 billion of corporate bonds. Now, there are $3 trillion of investment-grade corporate bonds. The shaded light area is the high-yield market. You'll notice that the high yield market now is very small compared to the investment grade bond market. It's actually the investment grade side is two and a half times as big as the junk bond side. However, the investment grade market is misrated, unfortunately. So this is, uh, this is hard to read, but it's a very important chart. I think it's my last one. What we have here on the right hand panel, on the, on the left is the growth of the triple B part of the investment grade market. That's the weakest part. So bond ratings are triple A, double A, single A, triple B, all of the above are investment grade. Each one is sequentially viewed to be a weaker credit. Once you get to double B, it's now called speculative by old school parlance. That means that you're, a prudent person might not want it. It's got too high a degree of default. It's a speculative grade security. Well, let's look at the panel on the right. Triple A. Actual, if you look at the composition, literally, of the investment grade market, 4% of it has a AAA rating. A study by Morgan Stanley Research said if we use debt ratios alone, which is probably the most important metric of a corporate uh, credit worthiness, if we use debt ratios alone, they say none of the investment grade market would be AAA. So the four is, is a sham. They say that 6% actual is dull A, but only 3% should be by debt ratios. Of single A, 36% is actual, they say 19 should be single A, and of triple B, they say 54% actual, only 34 should be triple B. So 62% of the triple Bs, they say, are, you know, are, are uh, 62% should be what, they're, what they actually are rated. But the most important are the two on the right. What that says is that of all the investment grade bonds, triple A, double A, single A, and triple B, they say 30% 30, 30 should be rated double B and 15% should actually be rated B, which means 45% of the investment grade bond market should be rated junk per this Morgan Stanley study. Well, I've got some secret news for you. When bonds get downgraded, their prices go down. Their yields have to go up and their prices go down. So we could easily see a situation where these ratings get taken to the appropriate levels, particularly if the economy weakens, and their corporate results have some deterioration, you could see 45%. What would happen? What would happen is you would have an en masse panic. I think that the corporate bond market today, the junk bond market, is in a similar position to what the mortgage securities market was in in 2007. It was misrated, and I remember when the bonds went down that had never gone below 100, they went down to 80, and people were cheering what a great buying opportunity it was. And it was for a while. They went back up to 94. But then they started dropping again. And what ends up happening when people do the buy the dip thing, and it's not really the bottom, is you have the first wave of selling that creates the dip. You have the relief rally. And then when the bottom gets taken out from the dip buying, the people that bought the dip turn in from buyers into scared sellers. So I remember when the mortgage bonds went from 100 to 80, People loved it. They thought it was a great idea. They bought them. They went up to 94. They ended, ended life at 20 on the bottom, 20. So I think that there's massive risk in the junk bond market and the triple B market, which is really the junk bond market that's unknown to be a junk bond market per the rating agencies. And the rating agencies acknowledge some of this as fact. But what they say is, we are not uh, taking the rating down even though the leverage is too high for the rating they have. And the reason we're doing that is we're hearing very reassuring talk from these companies. Well, it's reassuring talk because the rating agencies have sympathetic ears. 
And so they're saying, we will do something about this at a future date. We will do some debt, we'll do some asset sales, we'll, 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 we'll eat our broccoli in the future, you know, we're not just going to gorge on, on peanuts and crackers, you know, but if the economy doesn't let them, or the market wakes up and says, I'm not going to supply you this credit at that price, well, then they're going to have to get downgraded. So I think I, I, I've, I am wickedly negative on the triple B rated. Um, and so I, I think that uh, it, it's interesting that while the economy is supposedly doing so well, and while there were hardly any, mature, any maturities in the corporate bond market, the investment grade corporate bond market did not have a good year. It was the worst performing sector of the investment grade bond market. If it's the worst performing sector during a good economy with low issuance, what's it likely to be under a weaker economy with boatloads of issuance? Thank you for your attention. We'll move to the next segment of our show today.